الحمد لله المبدئ المعيد الفعال لما يريد خلق فهدى وقدر خلق فسوى وقدر فهدى والحمد لله الذي على نعمه المتتالية نحمده سبحانه وتعالى ونشكره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم على من بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين وسببا لهداية العالمين أجمعين فأخرجنا الله سبحانه وتعالى به من الضلالة وأنقذنا به من الغواية اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى في السر وفي العلن يوصيكم ربكم في محكم تنزيله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وعلموا عباد الله أن أحسن الكتاب كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Dear brothers We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We exalt him, we glorify him We send salat and salam Upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam On his households On his companions And those who follow their footsteps Until the day of judgment Indeed the best of the speech is the Allah's book and the best of the guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst affairs in the deen is the innovation and every single innovation is the form of the misguidance and every single misguidance is the form of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from those misguidance. The khutbah of today is about the winter season. We are inshallah by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will try to derive some benefits and the lessons and the adab and the manners regarding the winter season. The very first benefit that we can learn is the season of winter and the summer and the spring and autumn that the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> creates whatsoever he wants. Whenever he wants, whatever way he wants. No one can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but indeed everybody will be questioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a supreme authority over everything that he created. He subhanahu wa ta'ala created the days and the nights. He created the summer, winter, spring, autumn, all these seasons. He created every single thing in the heaven and the earth. But this season of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala derives or attracts the Bani Adam to have the certain faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said in the Quran, Sanurihim fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyan lahum annahu al haq. And this is the core objective and the maqsad of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among them these seasons that he says 
Indeed, I will show them my signs in the horizon, in the above, and in themselves until it becomes clear to them that I am the truth. So the, the diversity of the seasons and the diversity in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so that the Bani Adam يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They think and ponder in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they can reach to the conclusion Allah is the one and alone وَأَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ That He has a supreme authority and He is powerful over everything. So through these seasons and the changes of these days and the nights from the hot season to the cold season they are all for us to understand and ponder in Allah's creation in Allah's qudra, His power and to understand His tawheedullah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is why it is the sign of the believer whenever he sees these changes in the earth he would be saying, "Inna fi khalqi al-samawati wal-ardi wa ikhtilaf al-layl wal-nahari la ayat al-liul al-albab." Indeed, in the creation of the heaven and the earth, in the changes of the days and the nights, are a clear sign for those who have the lub, they have the clear intellect and the understanding. So it is a sign for us to ponder through our reasoning to find Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then, what is the conclusion? رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Spontaneously it will come out from the core of our heart when we see these changes of the seasons and the creations of Allah. Oh Allah, you did not create all this without any purpose. Of course, there's a clear purpose that you have created all of this. That is why they will engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with more relationship, with more ibadah, and devout themselves exclusively for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second benefit we understand from these changes of the season is that the natural scientists, they say because of the winter comes because of these moon changes or these certain fanak, certain stars changes their paths and the galaxies goes from this direction to the other directions as you see in the news always the weather specialist how they explain these things why winter comes or why summer comes or why autumn and the spring comes yesterday it was the summer and today is the winter why these changes they explain in the natural science way that they see and explain those things but there is a beyond this it might be sometimes true, but beyond this, there remain reason of these changes as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us through His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith in the Bukhari and the Muslim. The why the summer comes or why the winter comes? Why suddenly hot turns to the cold? The main reason we find this from the revelation is not from the weather specialist what they say of the changes of the stars and the moons this might be partially right but the main reason here is found in the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam jahannam complained to allah oh allah part of my eating the another part of mine so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the permission to jahannam to have two brief Nafasun fi shita, wa nafasun fi saif. One breathe in the winter time and another breathe in the summer time. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu he says, "Fa ashad ma tajiduna min al harri, wa ashad ma tajiduna min al zamharir." So when you feel the severest of the heart, know this is the breathing of the jahannam of the hot part of the jahannam. So when the severe peak time of the Summertime comes and the severe heart goes to the 40, 45 degrees. It will relate to us directly that Jahannam is breathing and the heart comes from the Jahannam. So this is the main understanding. And then, What you find of the severest of the cold is from the part of the Jahannam is called Zamharir. Zamharir is the cold part of the Jahannam. Jahannam is divided by two, two types of punishment. One types of punishment, fire itself of the heat 
and this is the freezing cold which is called Zamharir. So in the severe winter time when we find this cold, it reminds us the reason of this existence or appearance of the winter season is because of the Jahannam of the Zamharir breathing. That is why Abdullah ibn Abbas in radiallahu ta'ala who used to say, يَسْتَغِيثُ أَهْلُ النَّارِ مِنَ الْحَرْ People of the Jahannam will seek Allah's help from the fire, from the heat of the Jahannam, the fire. فَيُغَاثُونَ بِرِيحٍ بَارِدَةٍ يَصْدَعُ الْعِظَامُ بَرْدُهَا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order the angels to give them the cold in such a severe way that will completely demolish their bones inside of the severe coldness. فَيَسْأَلُونَ الْحَرَّ Then they will again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh Allah just give us the heart of the fire and then وَيَسْتَغِيثُونَ بِحَرِّ جَهَنَّمْ They will again ask for this and this why they will continue in the punishment of the severe heart and the severe cold of the Jahannam. That is why Abdullah ibn Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah Rajab ibn Hanbali rahimahullah he said فَإِنَّ شِدَّةَ بَرْدِ الدُّنْيَا يُذَكِّرُكُمْ بِزَمْهَرِيرِ جَهَنَّمْ that is the second benefit that we should learn lesson from the severe winter season that this will remind us of the severe punishment of the cold in the Jahannam. Winter comes, winter goes. What is the benefit if we don't take this lesson that we prepare ourselves this winter of this dunya in its severe coldness even if it goes beyond minus 50, 60 in the Antarctic Ocean that you see nowadays is nothing compared to the what is severe cold in the Jahannam. <coughs> and in return we find what? These are the people of the Jahannam, they will be punished with these two types of the punishment. But in the Jannah, the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that وَجَزَاؤُهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ لَا يَرَوْنَ فِيهَا شَمْسًا وَلَا زَمْهَرِيرًا And the Reward of those who had patience in this dunya of responding to Allah's calls, they will get the Jannah and the beautiful clothes which is made of harir. They'll be reclining on the beautiful thrones and the beautiful cushions and the sofas and the beds. Such a abode, such a beautiful abode that there will be no hot, no cold. So Jannah has no heart, no call in between. It's a beautiful season that Allah will give them. And in return, in vice versa, we see the people of the Jahannam. So my dear brothers, when winter comes, let us remind ourselves that how the Jahannam would be and how the Jannah would be. Should not we try our best so that we can secure our place in the Jannah and save ourselves and do actions to our save ourselves from the Jahannam. And the third benefit of the winter season we find <coughs> is the preparation to receive the winter season. How we can take the preparation? Umar al-Faruq radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, Inna shita'a qad hadar wa huwa aduwun lakum. Indeed, winter season came to you, and it is your enemy. Fata'ahabu lahu bi uhubatan min al-sufi wal khifaf wal jawarib. Take preparation for the winter season with the wool and the cotton clothes and the socks. All these things take, prepare with those. Meaning, Make sure that you are buying your jackets and all these things. Take prepare of yourself with those. وَاتَّخِذُ الصُّوفَ شِعَارًا وَدِثَارًا فَإِنَّ الْبَرْدَ عَدُوٌ Because the cold is enemy. سَرِيعٌ دُخُولُهُ It's very quickly winter comes. وَبَعِيدٌ خُرُوجُهُ And very hardly it goes. When winter comes, you'll find very slowly the winter going away. So take the preparation. Look, the companions also used to have these kind of precautions and the preparation to receive the winter. Ali radiallahu used to say, اتقوا الشتاء fear the shita. Men take the prevention from the shita, winter. في أولي in its beginning. Because beginning is the first strikes. That is why the viral goes, and the virus goes, kids become ill, they got cough and the cold. So first, in the very beginning, if we take the precautions properly, then inshallah, Allah will protect us from this winter. Also, make sure you are ready for the last of the winter. Winter does exactly as it does with the body, as it does with the trees. You know, the winter comes, the, all the leaves of the trees, 
are coming out of the tree. Similarly, it makes with the body. The body become completely different than the summer season. So you need extra lotions, extra creams to make sure your skins are moisturized and you can be prepared and, pre and, and take the uh, preventive measures to save yourself from these winter and these diseases that comes with. Also in the winter season, this is the one of the main points that we like to focus here. You know, some of our parents, mashallah, they are earning days and the nights. You know, one of the story, one of the brothers said me a few days before, earning days and nights, living in a house is completely, you can say, disgrace. It's not even the people can live in the house. There is no problem with the money because he is sending money back home. No one to live but the God, but the, but the people of the jinn and the shayatin to live in their house. <coughs> Spending millions of the money, pound. But here living in a congested two bedroom, you have five to six kids. And you hardly change your mattress. You hardly change your, the, 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 what is called the carpets. And the kids, they are suffering. And also they don't put the proper heating systems in the house. Why this life, lifestyle, my dear brothers? Why you are working days and the nights, but you don't take proper care of your own kids? They become ill in this season. People, they are stingy in that, in that nature. In that level, they go down. So make sure, my dear brothers, Allah gave the ni'mah. So use this ni'mah, of course, not in an excessive way, in a proper way to save your family members from those. If you need to make sure the house is warm enough, and the children taking enough water in this season, and they are taking the fruits that is like citrus fruits, in the winter season to prevent the cough and all these things. These are natural medicines that we should be taking in that time. And then also, when we put the fire in the house, I mean the fireplace, make sure that before you sleep that you extinguish the fire. One of the hadith is mentioned in the Bukhari. And Abi Musa, عنه, he says, A house in the Medina was burned in the night because of the fire. So this information brought forth through Rasulullah about this incident. And Rasulullah addressed to the people, said, Indeed, this fire is your enemy. When you sleep, make sure you extinguish the fire. Among the benefits in the winter season, is that ash-shu'uru bi ni'matillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. To realize and you understand the Allah's ni'mah and the blessing. I remember <clears throat> about 10, 8, eight nine years before in, in north, where I used to live before, our elderly uncles at the age of 80 and 90, they were telling me some stories. The in 60s and the 70s, when they came first in the UK, you know, in the north, when the, the snow comes, it goes to the 12 to 10, 13, 14 inches higher from the ground. They said they used to go for the walk, walking sometimes and in the car for hours and then they don't have the facility of the heating system, a central heating system, hot water, nothing. And they used to go, sometimes their car is stuck because of the snow and they used to wait in the car for 10 to 12 hours in this severe heat. MashaAllah, nowadays the situation is different. In every household, there is a central heating system. Marshal, everything is there, ni'mah of Allah. This is the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It requests, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ And by the ni'mah of Allah that He gave you, فَحَدِّثِ Speak about it. Speaking the ni'mah of Allah, blessing of Allah means, first of all saying, Alhamdulillah. At least we don't have to suffer as our elders used to suffer in 60s and 70s. In terms of the cold, severe cold. Secondly, that this ni'mah we should show in ourselves and for our brothers, especially brothers are in Syria. Those brothers are in the fil mukhayyam al in the sheltered, in the, in the, the camps of the, um, the refugee camps in Syria, in different areas, even in Bangladesh nowadays, you know, the, our Burmese brothers, our Kani brothers, they came. The real problem will start now when the severe cold will come. They will not have anything, but Allah gave us, mashallah. You are buying the jacket 60 pounds, 70 pounds. Your wife saying, this jacket was last year model. I have to change this to the next, uh, latest year of this one. But the jacket was fine still, but you're still buying for your wife. 
Allah gave you your body, mashallah. But don't neglect and forget you destitute brothers. Those who will be dying because of the only severe cold. And in Bangladesh, we know, in the North Bengal, every year hundreds of the people they die because of the severe cold they don't have anything the poor people people on that area are destitutely they severely poor so this winter comes remind us when we buy new clothes for our children we share same thing for our muslim brothers who are suffering because of the severe cold so take some portion of your money and send for these brothers this is the real implication of the ni'mah that Allah gave to you and this is the real shukur and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the benefit number five <coughs> when the severe cold comes it brings also sometimes severe wind the hawa Rasulullah sallallahu taught us a dua when it comes that you seek protection of Allah protectioning Allah from those severe wind Rasulullah used to see and his companion used to see once in a time if they used to see a reef they used to be frightened and ask Allah to save them from the punishment a hadith of Rasulullah in the Muslim كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا عصفت الريح whenever reef the wind used to come he used to say اللهم إني أسألك خيرها وخير اللهم إني أسألك من اللهم إني أسألك خيرها وخير ما فيها وخير ما سألت به Ma, ma atad bihi. Oh Allah, I ask from this wind of the good and the good that brings. Wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma fiha. And I seek protection in you from the evil of this wind and what it brings. So then a believer will be protected from this. Benefit number seven. In the winter season, of course, whatever measurement or the precaution we take, someone might be ill. Still, Whenever you do your best to, pre to, pre to prevent the, the illness, but still the calamities would come. It is Allah's taqdeer. In that sense, in that moment, a believer should have the proper sabr, patience on Allah, and he should expect the reward <coughs> out of this illness. One of the hadith in the Muslim, <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ummi sa'ib. He entered in the house of ummi sa'ib. Faqala ya ummi sa'ib, ma laki? To Zef Zifin. Oh, Umm Sa'ib, what? Why I see you shivering? Qalat, then she said, Al Humma la barakallahu fiha. I'm shivering because of the fever. May Allah not make it blessed by fever. Meaning there is no blessing in a fever. Faqala, Rasulullah said to her, La tasubbil humma. Don't curse or don't swear the fever. Fa innaha tuzhibul khataya. Bani Adam kama yudhibu kiru khabath al hadid Rawahu Muslim. Don't curse the fever because the fever is a reason through which Allah expates the sins of the Bani Adam as the furnace removed the alloys of the iron. When the iron has a, some furnace on it and this, you put the heater and the fire on it, it removes. Similarly, when the fever comes and it's most of the time comes because of the winter in the very beginning, have the sabr and has expect reward from Allah that he will expand your sins out of this. Another benefit from the winter season we find is that this is a season in which it's very hard for us to maintain basically the wudu and the, all these things. Even it is hard to maintain the wudu but Rasulullah SAW, he told us Isbaghul wudu al makari وَكَثْرَةُ الْخُضَى خُطَى إِلَى الْجُمُعَاتِ وَانْتِظَارُ الصَّلَاةِ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ Completing the wudu even if you dislike, meaning like severe winter, maybe the hot water is disconnected now, you only having the cold water, even in that moment, you perfect your wudu ablution. If you do so, and then you come to the masjid, and you wait for one salah to another salah, it is as if you are given the reward of the rebat guarding the Muslim borders from the enemies. This is the reward of this. So winter season comes, of course, still we make sure that our wudu is perfect. One thing here we can understand as well, difficulties, hardship that we go work, we cannot have the proper access to the water, all these things. Then we can take the rukhsa, that Allah gave us flexibility of doing the masah, on our socks 
You can do the masih on the socks. To do the masih on the socks, you have to put the socks after doing complete wudu. And then you put the socks. And you can do for one day and one night masih after the first breaking of wudu and when you start the first masih. This is allowed. Any kind of socks is allowed to do it. As long as it covers the area where the wudu, where the first wudu is due to do. And it continues for one day and one night for the one who is living and for the one who is traveling, three days and the three nights. So you can do how to do the masah. You just moisture your both hands with the water and in the same time rub the both hands from the toes of the, the, the feet to the top of the ankle. In that way on the top. This is how you do the masah and it will continue inshallah. So this is the flexibility of Allah you can take in this season. Among the benefits of the... Um, winter season is also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions they used to consider any mausim that Allah gives and they used to link them with the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so winter comes summer comes autumn comes every season a believers will look forward how to take the advantage of that time to dedicate themselves in ibadat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially winter is a blessed Month, blessed season for Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to engage in the varieties of the ibadat in this season. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to derive these lessons and understand these lessons from this winter season. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu wa al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ومن والاه صحابي عامر بن مسعود الجهني يسير رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سير الصوم في الشتاء الغنيمة الباردة حديث إن السلسلة الصحيحة للإمام الألباني رحمه الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سير the fasting in the winter season is a cool booty and the Imam ibn Rajab al Hanbali رحمه الله he replied and he gave the expression of this hadith as he says Indeed, the winter season is the spring for the believers. Because in this season, he can swim and fly in the field of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing the lots of ibadat. And his heart becomes flexible and rich and rich with the light of the ibadat. Because in this winter season, the day becomes short, so it's easy to fast, so the believer will not feel the thirsty, neither will feel the hunger. And the night becomes long, so the believers will get the enough portion of the sleep to comfort himself, and can also wake up in the last one third of the night to do the Qiyamul Layl and recite the Allah's book. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says, Marhaban bishita, welcome to the winter season. Tanzilu fihi al-baraka. In this season, the baraka, blessings of Allah, descends. Wa yatulu fihi al-layl. Night becomes long. Lil qiyam. So that you can do the qiyam al-layl. Wa yaksuru fihi al-nahar. And the day becomes short so you can fast. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he used to say, Ni'ma zaman al-mu'mini ash-shita. The best season of the believer is the winter season. Layluhu tawilun yaqumuh. Wa naharuhu qasirun yasumuh. The night is long so he can do the qiyam al-layl. And the days are the short that he can do the fasting. And the wa'ahabbu siyami ila Allahi siyami da'ud. This is my urge to myself and to all of you brothers. The best of the fasting is the fasting of the Dawud alayhi salatu wasalam. Kana yasumu yawman wa yafturu yawman. He used to fast one day and he used to break fast another day. Meaning every other day he used to fast. And it's possible very easily in the winter season. You know most of us, we don't even take our meal, day meal after Eid. Most of them after 4 o'clock. This is the, what is the reality. And few days after, the Maghrib will be before the 4 o'clock. So if you just make intention, wake up for the futur, wake up for the suhoor, and eat with the intention to make fasting, you can do it, my dear brothers. Each fast for the sake of Allah, which is voluntary, ba'ad Allahu bihi jahannam sab'ina khalifa. For each voluntary fasting, Allah will distend the jahannam from you for the 70 years of the distance. So this is a very good season. Easily we can fast without any thirst and the hunger. There are so many other statements of the 
the Salaf Salih and how they used to look to this winter season. It's a beautiful for the ibadat so that we can engage with the varieties of ibadat. At least if we cannot do so much fasting, my dear brothers. Make sure you don't miss in the Mondays and Thursday of the fasting. If you can do the Siyam Dawood, it's the best, mashallah. It just need the azima and the intention from the heart. May Allah give us tawfiq. As Allahumma inni da'in fa aminu. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab al-nar. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam tawfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. Allahumma a'iz al-islam wa al-muslimin wa khudul al-kafrata wa al-mushikin. اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا ويستر عيوبنا وفك أسرنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم على نبينا الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأقيم الصلاة Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illa.